the number of people on sick benefit in this country has shot up by a third yeah. in just four years. That's 10% of the adult UK population are now on sick benefit. And that dwarfs figures coming out of Europe now. They're going the other way. And the thing is, I've looked at every single newspaper mm. on this this morning, nobody seems to know why. There are lots of theories, but nobody knows what's happening. Any ideas? Well, there are a number of reasons, I think, which are going on here. And we are the sick man of Europe. We are out of step mm. with other European nations and the G7. And actually, since the pandemic, mm -hmm. whereas other countries have recovered on employment, we haven't. A lot of it's driven by mental health problems. Some of it's also, by the way, obesity. People whose uh, joints, their knees, their hips and so on are forcing them out uh, of the workplace because their weight is putting so much pressure on them. But I think what you've got to do is you've got to bring together your health services with your social security services so they're more joined up. But there's also, I think, a whole number of young people, especially young men, mm. who are not in employment, they're not in education, they're not in training. They should be uh, given, I believe, some tough love. You know, if you're young and out of work, you know, the system should be, should be giving you support, yes, to get back into work, training and opportunities, yes. But if you're not prepared to take up those opportunities, I think the system's got to get tough with you. Yeah, For... look, I think the issue... I think you identified two things that are clearly very important. I think the obesity and nutrition issue is a big issue in this country compared to perhaps other countries in Europe. And the second thing is uh, mental health. Now, I don't know why, uh, for example, in Europe, it's something that hasn't uh, taken off, but it's certainly something which has changed in our culture, people's approach to, to mm -hmm. mental health. I mean, I'm, we're old enough to Are you remember... saying that that's skewing the figures? No, I think a lot of those um, uh, uh, long-term issues and sick note culture and all of that, I think it is to do with mental health. And I think there's a huge awareness of it now, mm. which didn't e exist 25 years ago. Yes, you were going to say, I mean, we're, we're old enough. Youth, yeah, we? you know, people just pull your socks off. I mean, mental health, that phrase, mental health, <laughs> wasn't even anything you really heard. Yeah. And there was a kind of British, you know, just let's stiff grin and bear lip. it, stiff up a lip, mm. you got a soldier on. But that and wasn't I think that culture's either, was No, it? I'm not saying but, it was good. But, I'm just saying there's been a shift in culture and people are a lot more aware of things like mental health. And you think that that shift hasn't taken place in, say, France or Italy or Germany? I don't know enough about the conditions there, but well, I certainly can detect Well, there was here. some research out, wasn't there, recently, that said we have the most unhappy young people in Europe. I think it was specifically teenagers, so under 20. And, you know, they not just were perhaps claiming benefits, because this is the benefit side of it, but they were experiencing mental health issues on a different scale. Is there something about where we are that makes us miserable. But what's happening at the moment is a lot of young people are going to the, the job centres, mm. the benefit office, as it, as it used to be called, mm. getting signed off sick for reasons of anxiety and bad nerves, and therefore, when they do that, you get a higher rate of benefit right. and you're under right. no obligation to look for work. Now, I think the way in which our job centres are making these decisions is not fit for purpose. The government are talking a bit about reforms for job centres, it's, it's, not, it's not going to cut the mustard. They need to go much further. But I would argue that if you're out of work in your early 20s mm. for low-level depression or anxiety, I actually think being out of work in some of those circumstances is going to make it worse. You're a former right. health that's secretary. Right. Yeah. You sound literally like Mel Stride. I mean, well, that's well, exactly <laughs> well, what he you know was something. saying. Mel Stride, he was saying it Mel makes Stride. you feel great. It's true. You know, because you've got a, a well, structure well, to your day, it helps well, you with anxiety. Right. Listen, right. I'm from, I was from a working-class background. My mum and dad taught mm. me that going out and getting a job, it gives you a routine, it means you can make something of a life, and they were able to do mm. things in their life because they went out and got a job. And Mel Stride, he actually used to copy me. Did he? Um, did he? he used to copy when me. Did he, do that? he did used to copy Listen to this. He's, not only did he used to <laughs> copy my ideas, the shop <laughs> where I go and get, buy my suits, I walked really in there and they and he said, You're that pop Labour politician. They said, We've had that Mel Stride in here the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so he even copies the place. He even copies the place to get my suits. <laughs> at least, at least yeah. you bought your own suit. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in about, yeah. in about three minutes. <laughs> Look, can we just squeeze us, drill down even deeper into this? We talked about men mental problems. What about our maternity services? This report out this morning makes for really grim reading. Mm. Uh, huge numbers um, of our maternity services across the board are not functioning properly. They're, they're, you can't count on them. Yeah. I mean, inadequate and, you know, poor, the worst rate of growth. Inadequate, that's terrifying I think it's part if you're of a about to go. problem with funding in the NHS, and this government will find, and we, we had our issues, obviously. 
uh, this government are going to now, mm. you know, they're in charge. Uh, and they're going to find a, a very, very difficult balancing act. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see what happens at, at the budget on the 30th of October. So you're saying it's a financial problem? It, it doesn't go deeper I than think, that? I, th I think there are two issues. I think, I think you're right to say uh, that it's a financial problem, uh, you know, underpinning it. But I think also attitudes uh, to maternity cover and care are also, are also issues. Because we've had, we've had scandals, frankly, mm. about uh, neonatal units. Uh, and and mm. there have been issues about, you know, fashions and, 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 and advice on, on how a, a baby should be born, all things like that. And, and I think there's been a, a problem here in this area. It's been slashed back massively over a number of years, hasn't it? You know, people can't expect people to come to their house anymore as frequently as they used to after the babies were given born. And in hospital, you know, it's absolutely stretched the limit. But when you're getting to the point where it's preventable death... Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when I did the health job for the Labour Party for many years, yes, it is. Some of it is to do about the, uh, the underfunding and the resources. Some of it's to do with that. They don't have enough midwives. You know, but isn't so that also midwives. to do with underfunding? Yeah, it is, in a that way. is again another. But you're uh, never going of... to. You're never going to catch up. You can never put more, enough money into the into the NHS because there's huge demand. Mm. And the other thing that you know we have to talk about is uh, po there's the increased demand through population growth. I mean, you know, we're dealing with far more people than was the case 20, 25 years but ago. But don't That's you know that accept. and plan for it? Yeah, but you still have to deal with it. I mean, you can plan mm. for it all you like, but, I, I but you've got to allocate resources which are, which are stretched. But I think one of the shocking things about maternity services, which always struck me, is how... And I used to find this when I was dealing with, with health issues. Mm. When, it was, when it came to a, um, a woman's health issue, um, a reproductive health issue, or even... Uh, maternity is very, very poor for women of um, African-Caribbean backgrounds, African majority yeah. women, very poor services. It always felt that they didn't get the same focus, mm. the same attention, the same interest from policymakers mm. as other services. And mm. uh, I think we've got to change that. Society uh, at West Street, they've really got to change that. I, really I think that's a little bit unfair, because we've had a lot of attention um, in space like Midstaffs on some of the, frankly, scandalous outcomes. Um, and this is, these aren't political points. I mean, this was in terms of, you know, the process and how they approached, even like the philosophy, if you like, of how you deliver babies or the thinking behind that. Mm. And, and there's been, this has been a contentious issue for years. Do you think that part of the deeper problem, going back in time, going back years, really, in this country, is our entire cultural attitude towards the NHS? We kind of treated it for so long as untouchable, as a religion almost. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think back to, 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 to the days of COVID. I mean, I personally felt very uncomfortable about the standing outside doorsteps and banging sure, pots sure. and pans. It just seemed so uncritical. And now we are at the point that we're at. We're having these conversations. Things have got that bad. Is that partly because we just didn't want to think of the NHS as being flawed? We just wanted to see it as I think just, you, I think as you're pure making, totemic. I think you're making a very good point. And the actual thing, certainly for the Conservatives, it was always seen as something that we, we couldn't go there because people suspected... Um, it was the great untouchable, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, so, so there was a, a real... And, and I remember there was a, when I be, first became a backbencher in 2010, there were the Andrew Lansley reforms and nobody understood what, what no. was going on. And they were slightly botched. I mean, it wasn't something that we delivered, um, you know, effectively. And I think after that, governments, certainly the Conservatives in power, as I remember, shied away from it as an issue. Yes, we tried to fund it, we tried to support it. But, but where... Uh, well, when you funding say it was the... untouchable, I don't think a anybody wanted it not to be improved. I think the problem was people perceived sure. the attempted improvements as making things worse. I mean, people want the NHS to work. No, but there are certain things that people don't want to change. Um, well, uh, well, like you know, what? I mean, I mean so... I'm not sure about that. I mean, look, mm. we shouldn't treat it as a religion. It's not a religion. No. It's, a, it's, a, it's an institution. It's a health service. But we should but be something to be proud of. It's something to be proud of. We should sure. be immensely proud that we deliver free healthcare when there's parts of the world where you can't get free healthcare. But you should be able to talk about reform and we're streeting right. the Labour he Health he Secretary. Does, he does talk about to be wants fair to him. reform it. He but, does. The, but there was a report, I think it was last week, from a very eminent uh, surgeon, mm. uh, a guy called Aradazi, who did. He went through all the problems yeah. of the NHS, 
And some of it does go back to those Andrew Lansley reforms. That's right. Of, of and 10, ten years ago. Twelve which, years ago. Was, yeah. Which were, were, I mean, they were chaotic. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and nobody still really knew what was going on. And that's that was how, the issue. Yeah, that's because that they the were issue. so chaotic. I remember that. That's yeah. true. I remember. When you say no one knew what was going on, you mean the people in, in putting him into place didn't know what so, was going on? So he was the se- held the health yeah. secretary and he was in charge of the reforms. Mm. And I was a backbencher at the time. Mm. And you'd go into, as a, as a young MP, or as a backbench MP, you'd go into these briefings. And at the end of it, people were like, so what, what does that actually mean? And then, and then you know, they'd say, oh, well, you know, don't worry about that. You know, we, 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 you know, Andrew understands, or the Secretary of State but, of the Department understands what's going on. And, but and I think maybe there was you just, didn't. Well, oh, well oh. I, I think they, 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 they weren't, they, we didn't deliver on it as effectively as we could. But what I would say, though, what I would say, you know, now, yeah, when the NHS waiting lists are at 7 million, pe- yeah. painfully long waiting lists for people, mm. tackling this problem is going to have to be one of the big priorities of a Labour government. Mm. If they want to get re-elected in four or five years' time, they've got to deliver it on the NHS. Couldn't agree because people well, think Labour governments yeah, are, right. are pro just, the NHS and expect It's Labour associated with Labour's history yeah, in a Labour's way that Labour's got to get on with, with it. Now, here's something that, that I would Just before wouldn't... we leave health, sorry, yeah, Richard. No, carry on. Pharmacists, uh, potentially first time ever taking its, uh, you know, balloting today on industrial action. Of course, they've been the people that actually have been seen as part of the solution for the stretch, certainly with GPs, something else. So I don't think you need to be. You know, so then you're in a position there when the the buffer is in trouble. Sure, but you didn't need to be, frankly, and you might have a different view, but you, you didn't need to be an Einstein to work out that once there were pay deals within the first two weeks, for train drivers, for junior doctors. That was essentially a green light. Pharmacists have been unhappy for a very, they have. very long they have. time and but it I'm wasn't saying, addressed. I don't, but I don't think it's a coincidence that they're now balloting for strike. Well, 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 it's not quite strike, it's more of a work to rule. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But they've never done it before, that's the point. Well, let's hope they, um, I mean, they don't go down that road because. You know, a pharmacist is very important. They could, should be doing more blood pressure tests. They should be able to do but more... But they say they can't uh, deliver on what they're doing at the moment. I know. I mean, their budget... I remember doing this when I was, when I was the, doing... How the long did you do that brief for? Is oh, I did time? forever. Uh, yeah. look Can at, I just say, yeah. I, I can't... I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm quite friendly with three pharmacists around where I live, and I find it really hard to imagine them saying no to people. If yeah. they take mm-hmm. this action, if, if they come in and say, can I have the prescription Maybe, for the antibiotics... Yeah, really. I'm sorry, I can't do that for you, Mrs. Jones, today. Um, we're on a work to roll. Well, I can't say... I mean, but I mean, a few weeks yeah. ago, we had the GPs. I mean, that's almost been forgotten now, but they, they, they were doing a work to rule type yeah. motion. And it was the first time in 60 but years that they done it. But they could kind of hide behind the front of house. That's yeah. right. I mean, it's different right. in, a, in, a, in a chemist. In, I mean, in Leicester, <laughs> where I live and where I, you know, I used to be the MP, I mean, I know so many pharmacists who will do a home delivery of mm. medicines um, and they don't get paid for that. They just do it because they're so Amazing. committed mm. to the... And they know to, people to the, can't get there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they, and they well, do it. And also they're very rooted in their community. I mean, I remember, you know, it was an MP, you know, Shepparton High Street, give a, a shout-out to them. But there were, phar- <laughs> there were pharmacists there and they knew everybody. Everyone yep. came in there. It was, it was right. very much a, a hub, yeah. a community That's why, hub. to be honest with you, I will be somewhat surprised if the vote does go in favour, if they get a majority vote in favour of taking this, this action. Yeah. Because... And I guess it would show how desperate they are. Well, it would, it actually, does. yeah. But, yeah. well, OK, I, I was going to say that... Here's a, here's a headline that you would never have predicted a couple of months ago, just a couple of months Jonathan's ago, with a new Labour... Uh, <laughs> Labour uh, after I years of opposition... Off, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sure. you've got to... Back in a minute. You've got to shut, right. it, you've got to shut this up, Jonathan. Um, <laughs> after years of opposition, we, uh, we have a Labour government and... A few weeks in, you get a headline like this on the front of the Star, which for once is actually mainstreaming what most of the papers are saying. Usually the Star does an alternative, but this is what most of the papers are leading or featuring big today. The king of the cadres. The, 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 the fact, the, the figure behind that is that Keir Starmer has been given £100,000 worth of freebies so far. Yeah. That is way more than any other leader has ever had in the same time period. It's way more than any ever any, any MP is getting at the moment. A hundred grand for a Labour Prime Minister at a time when he's taking away the heating benefit yeah. of mm-hmm. pensioners. I mean, and all of that. Uh, and he's getting free specs. Do you think in accepting expensive free spectacles, he's lost sight of the optics. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, very uh, good. Very... Uh, Look, I think it's bizarre, this story, because, I mean, you know, in the past... Actually, you that see was this... my wife Judy's line. Oh, I have exactly. to, oh, well, I have uh, to uh, hand it to her. Anyway, shout out to her. But, <laughs> but we'll I let you come back, Jonathan, don't worry. But what's weird about it is, that, is, is all these freebies and gifts. Because, actually, you know, we've had a tradition, people, you know, would give money to a leader's office so that they could, they could fund people uh, and they could employ people, and that was very transparent. 
But all these various gifts, I mean, I can't imagine what £100,000 of gifts looks like. Are they, is it theatre oh, tickets? He's wearing, look, he's wearing some of it. He's, he's got it on his shoulders. You can't imagine he's got what 100000 We're talking, though, since 2019. Yeah, so, so what are they? Suits, glasses, Suits, well, glasses. football tickets? Well, a big chunk of them is football tickets. Yeah. He's a big, big fan. Uh, like a, a, I mean, I know you get politicians who pretend to be football right. fans. He's a <laughs> real Arsenal. football fan yeah, and he yeah. likes to go and watch yeah. the Arsenal. Yeah. And because he now has security, because he's obviously a, a prime minister or when he was leader of the opposition, he could no, he, he can no longer go in his seat where he's got the season ticket for. Mm. So he had to go in the boxes so and then he has to declare the fact that the Arsenal is giving him access. Well, let's to the just boxes. quote the price on that. Eight and a half thousand pounds a, a, ga a game. Eight and a half thousand. Well, that just tells you how much, how much money the Premier League are charging Absolutely. people's going yeah. to the yeah. uh, stadium. But, and, and do we know who's giving him these gifts? I mean, it's not just Lord Ali. No, I mean, is this it? is from, whole, the, uh, from the from the football club. Well, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it'll be from the Arsenal. Um, in terms of the other gifts, well, we know it's a lot of them the from Lord Ali, but it'll be from other Labour donors. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's bizarre. Why can't they just? But seriously, you know, playing playing with words aside, optics and stuff, it's not a good look for Labour Prime Minister. But I don't understand why it's all these these sort of payments in kind. I mean, it's a sort of place. Could it be, Jonathan? You know, just at the point of evidence, we know that Lord Ali is a genuine friend of Sir Keir Starmer, isn't it? Over yeah. a long yeah. number of years, throughout all things, he's a very rich friend. Is there fundamentally anything wrong with him saying, you need to smarten up, mate, you're about to run well, for election, look, let me buy you some suits? I'm just saying, because that's the sort of thing mates would do. So, Maybe not a hundred no, grand. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't, but you wouldn't buy clothes. Let Jonathan mates, go. Mates, Paul Jonathan well, has I mean, a lunch. I mean, politicians, <laughs> I mean, look, you know, politicians do. Uh, get offered tickets for things mm. and bits and bobs when you're a politician. I mean, you know, I went to the Brit Awards one year, for example. Mm. I mean, I saw these, you there. Uh, yeah, and I'm sure yeah, you get yeah. You know, went, yeah. <laughs> and the right thing is that to do is for politicians to properly declare all these things right. when they are. You know, there's certain levels that you have to declare. I can't, remember, right. what, I can't remember what the level is, but I think it's once you go over £300 or something like that. I, I can't, I, I can't I remember it, what it is, but, you know... In the old days, it was 10% of your income. Yeah, yeah but there's no suggestion that he's not it's all declaring. declaring. Obviously, he's obviously sure. <coughs> declaring the gifts of, of his wife's uh, frocks was declared a bit late, uh, but there's no-one really saying that he's, in, he's attempting to swerve his obligation no. to declare it. It's just the amount of stuff that he's accepting and, not, and actually not mm. saying no thanks to. I think mm. it's a bit bizarre. I mean, because yeah. it's not like... I, think, I actually have an unfashionable view, and I think the Prime Minister isn't paid enough. If you look at other G7 countries, they're paid way more, the heads mm -hmm. of government. But that's a separate yeah, but... debate. But he's paid enough to be able to get a suit. But if you're going to go to the football and, the, and your security services say you can no longer sit in your normal seat mm -hmm. where you've got a season ticket because it's in the crowd and if anything happens, we can't get to you, and then the football club says, well, just start coming in our box. Mm. Look, you know, I that's get what's that. gone on there. But, John, and, yeah. but, but what about the suits? I find that really weird. Do you think mm. it might be? You're both, you're, you've both been in government. Is it the headiness of power? Suddenly, he's being driven everywhere in the back of a limo, basically, without riders. The traffic parts like the Red Sea, whenever the Prime Minister there is a bit of that. gets on the road. And I just wonder if, if, after all this time in opposition, something like that can go to somebody's head and they feel a sense of entitlement, almost, because of the, of the supreme position they're now in. He is our Prime Minister. Look, he, he... I think he's quite a balanced guy. I, I don't think he's one of these people who's going to go nuts in power. But I do find these gifts a bit strange. I mean, you know, someone buying... I mean, when was the last time someone bought you a suit? Well, I'm I wearing mean, one. I bought that... seven. This I bought this seven years ago. Yeah, but but you know, it's, a bit, it's an old thing. It's an old. It's an well, old look, gift. TV. Uh, what from a friend? Yeah. Friends buy me tops all the time. They're Do not they? worth a hundred grand, <laughs> but and the clothes, it's what I like. It's yeah, what I like. And, and I you think... know what I mean? I, I think it's a different. It's a different. So, thing, so what I would say it? is, that when, certainly when you're in government, you don't have time. I mean, certainly when well, I was this in the cabinet, thing, isn't it? You, you don't have, have the time, time to go to wherever oh, it is I mean, and buy a suit. I so mean, so other than me, me and Mel Stride in... going to the same. Uh, Where was it? Uh, by the way, was it a hundred grand suit, Jonathan? Was it a hundred grand suit? I I wish. No. No, I mean. You know, he hasn't got time to nip down to Mark Spencer and get himself that. some new suits. I do accept that. Oh. Suit okay. and I found that when I was. I bet somebody come in and said, "Look, if you, you've obviously not got time to be wandering around Oxford Street at Marks and Spencers, why don't I sort it out for you?" Yeah, but he could have paid for it. But he could have paid for it. Okay, and that's the point, it. isn't it? It's it's. You know, if you're thinking about looking good, what doesn't look good, <laughs> as Richard has said, is the optics exactly. of this: mm. taking money away from pensioners and then accepting gifts. For, of whatever form. And Is it just something that a Prime Minister can't do? Particularly so, a Labour so, one. Look, I accept the point that he didn't have time to baguette the suits, but once someone bought them from me, he could have reimbursed them. 
he could have said, look, I'll, All right. I'll pay for that. Let's, let's just move it slightly to one side, <laughs> uh, but we're still talking money. I mean, another of the common headlines in most of the papers this morning is that Sue Gray, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, yeah. is the only pensioner who's doing well under <laughs> Labour. Uh, she is actually earning just over £3,000 more than the Prime Minister. It's reported, we don't know if this is verified or not, but it's reported that it was suggested to her when she took on the job that she accept a little bit less, just so it didn't look bad uh, that the Chief of Staff was earning more than the PM. But apparently, she reportedly, she refused. So she's now earning more than him. Again, it's not a good look, is it? No. I don't understand why she insisted on, on getting paid more. Well, I'm not sure... I don't know if that is... If that's the case. Uh, that, I, I, mean, I don't know why she would do that. Well, she is... The, the, the BBC have definitely verified that she is being paid more than the PM. Definitely. I mean, that's, I think, that's true. I mean, and it, yeah. It's a hell of a lot of money, but, uh, you know, and people are sometimes shocked at this, it's not out of step with what senior civil servants running departments get. Mm. It, the, bit, the issue you know, I have well, is the, Prime, Minister, well, the well, Prime Minister's I mean... pay has essentially... Well, it's not been frozen, but it, it hasn't really gone up okay. uh, with, with, with other uh, pay. And I think the so bigger think Prime Minister... So you should be paid more? I do, I do. I mean, I know it's unpopular to say that, but I think if you look at, um, you know, the President of the United States gets $400,000, the Chancellor of Germany is 350,000 euros, they're way above... Um, what that British Prime Minister gets. But, but and I think uh, being British Prime Minister is a serious though, if job. If he came in and gave himself no, he a can't pay do rise. That. He can't, I get, but right, it's an independent so... body. Um, and I think that we've got to be honest about the fact that this is a very serious job. And he sh I'm not saying he should be paid like oh, a CEO, I mean, but I think, he, I think it should be in step with other countries well, of a I mean, comparable... I mean, how much... I mean, the government spends now, what, a trillion pounds? Is about a trillion yeah. pounds. You know, that's about big that's right. money, obviously. Mm. And the, the heads of individual government departments are responsible for big budgets, yeah. and they get these types of salaries. Yeah, but the Prime mm. Minister's in charge of the lot, and they get paid more than he does. But, that, but, 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 but yeah, yeah. Which but that, I think is... But, that, is... but that's because we've frozen ministers' pay that's right. for years. we have. Because we have. any government which yeah, tries to increase you... ministers' pay... Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Well, I'll yeah. tell you who is earning good money, and that's Nigel Farage. Um, he's oh, yes, reportedly yes. on over a million a year now with yeah, his GB right. News contract. Obviously, his salary as an MP. We're going to be talking to him, Kate and I, in about half an hour. Mm. Um, the dust has settled after the election. Um, what is it, 77 days, I think, since... Uh, Something since, like since, that. Like that, since, since Bowling Day. So I think it's a legitimate question now to, to ask him, and I'd like to know what you think about this. What is reform actually for? What's, what's, what's it really for? Now the election's over and all the promises and threats and all the rest are gone, what's left? They're, they've got five MPs, what can they do and who's, I mean, their, got, who's their main you, target? You, well, I mean, you know, I think reform appears to be a party trying to uh, replace uh, uh, Quasi's party. <laughs> I think... You mean the Conservatives? You'd say this you Conservatives. Can't, you, you can't say this. You can't say this. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm happy to say. Although, there were times on this panel today, you've sounded like the Labour guy. and I, no, I, no, 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 no. I was thinking the same thing. Exactly the same thing. I'm not, not going to take that. Uh, but, uh, but in all seriousness, no, we know, because we... I mean, we, you know, we've been in Parliament. Uh, what matters in Parliament is, is the government and how well organised the main opposition are. These parties, where they've got four or five, you know, MPs here yeah. and there... They sink without tr trace in Parliament, frankly. I mean, Nigel Farage has got his media profile, but in yes. terms of the House of Commons, mm. they're making no impact. And it's the same for all these other little odds and Do they make an impact as a noisy... Yeah, they can be noisy. Uh, ..opposition? I mean, they certainly squeezed the Conservative Party, didn't so, they? So, look, I think, the, I think they're a, they're a, they are a massive problem for the Conservative Party. I mean, mm. let's, let's make uh, no, no bones about that. They, they split the Tory vote in lots of constituencies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of good former colleagues of mine lost their seats um, by a whisker where reform got thousands of votes. Mm. You look at someone like Penny Mordens or Richard Drax in the mm. South Coast, both of them. Uh, well, they lost reform by didn't, about... didn't win, but they, exactly. they took they, the vote. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they lost by about 800 votes, <sighs> 1,000 votes, and reform were getting seven or 8,000. So you can see that they were, they, they were damaging. Now, as a destructive force, I totally understand them. I don't know what their constructive offer is. And Jonathan makes a good point. They've only got five MPs. And nobody credibly thinks that they're going to be in government anytime soon. So they can afford to really, you know, plague on both your houses. Mm. They can be disruptors. They can they can argue against things. But in terms of their constructive offer, I'd be very interested to hear on a what Nigel Farage said. On a said. personal level with him, I mean, Labour are looking at uh, at whether MPs should even have second jobs. Um, what do you think about his and the fact that he earns him so much money? Well, I think these um, the House of Commons. There's a committee in the House of Commons called the. Is it the procedures or the modern... Yeah. Anyway, one of these House Commons committees... Yeah, modernisation. Is, is, yeah. ..is now looking at whether all these MPs should have their own 
uh, chat shows and things like that. Because it's one thing to come on a programme like this as an MP or an ex-MP mm. to sort well, of offer opinions. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But should an actual MP mm. be presenting a TV show mm. where they're interviewing other MPs? I think this is the House of Commons' wants to look at this because... It's not, it's, I don't see the problem with it. You don't? I really, yeah. I really no. don't. But that wasn't I mean, your pitching for one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not an MP anymore. It's not an issue. But there me. was... I mean, I don't, I don't um, want to knock I'm not the... A, I'm not... I don't want to knock the individuals because it's not about the personalities, but there was... I think there were two Conservative MPs in the last Parliament yeah. who had one of these TV shows and they were interviewing Rishi Sunak, yeah. even though there were two... It's a journalistic basis. Yeah. There's a question, question mark, but can generally, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see... Can it, I just... Uh, I always like to end with something that leaves you both blanching at how to respond. <laughs> uh, Melania Trump, oh. former First oh, Lady. Crikey. Here you go. You're looking nervous. <laughs> uh, <I'm not> nervous. <laughs> could now be a First Lady sure. again. Um, she says she's very proud of her nude modelling past and doesn't know what's wrong with people uh, that know we can no longer celebrate a beautiful female human form. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, look, fair, fair play to her. It's not for... Um, <laughs> no, these are like... <laughs> it's not for... Too often... No, the serious part is, too often uh, men try to tell women what they can and can't do, what they can and can't wear, Absolutely. how they should and sure. shouldn't present themselves. Sure. So... Yeah. So these pictures yeah. were, like, 30 years ago? I mean, it's a long mm. time the, ago. The, the I mean, nude photographs were about yeah. 30 years yeah. exactly. so, ago. Um, long before wouldn't she Wouldn't you like to know what, what's going on in Melania Trump's head? Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, she's written a lot of biography, hasn't she? I don't know how frank it's going to be. But, no. uh, it won't be that frank. It won't be, will it? I think Donald's people would have gone through it like it with the uh, no, I, November's yeah. going to be, gonna be fast. Who do you think will win? Trump or... Oh, that's a really good question. Everybody always seems to think that they know. Do you know, I think it's too close to call, yeah, don't you? Very close. I mean, I really in America, do think it's too close to call. In America, they say it's much closer than it yeah. is yeah. over yeah. here as well. I think I'll, Trump Look, will, we've I'll, got I'll special think coverage uh, of the American that, elections as well, so we're going to be looking into all of that are, then. who are responding to the polls out there. These are online polls. That's right. And they yeah, tend to right. favour... Urban, more Democrats. Absolutely. You tend to get more Democrats answering. You know, I thought that the nude Melania Trump would shut you up because the producers are screaming at me, but apparently... <laughs> you cope with it brilliantly. Uh, lovely to well, chat to both of you. Well, he went first, so it's always easy to follow. <laughs> yeah, he sorted it for you both, didn't he?